There's a big class action lawsuit against Microsoft, GitHub, and OpenAI. And the lawsuit alleges that GitHub Copilot is utilizing artificial intelligence to help programmers create code, but in doing so, is violating copyright law. Now, this lawsuit can have huge implications when it comes to using AI to generate artwork. There's been a lot of complaints from artists who are very upset over the fact that AI has been trained on their artwork and is now creating new artwork and sometimes winning competition. Competitions. But beyond that, AI can be used to create videos, it can be used to create photos, artificial intelligence is used to create blog posts and marketing materials, and the music industry is very concerned over the copyright issues of AI-generated music. But this class action lawsuit might change the way these training models work in the future. And it's grabbing a lot of people's attention because if you look at the economy, you hear about all the tech layoffs. You see that cryptocurrency has taken a massive decline in value. Investors are looking for places to put their money in. And AI is one of the biggest games in town. So let's unpack what this all means. Microsoft purchased GitHub. Microsoft being a commercial company with commercial software. GitHub being the platform that developers use to upload their code to. A lot of open source projects have their code on GitHub. A lot of proprietary projects have their code on GitHub as well. Now, when Microsoft purchased GitHub, Hub, developers were concerned. They wanted to know what was going to happen with their workflows. Was their code protected? What privacy issues might arise? And some developers chose to leave. And recently, GitHub announced that they're no longer going to be supporting the Atom Text Editor, which is a tool used by a lot of developers. It didn't make sense for GitHub and Microsoft to support two different text editors. Atom AI was created by GitHub and VS Code by Microsoft. Now, VS Code is the text editor that most developers use, but still a small portion of the community like using Atom. And just last year, GitHub released Copilot. And the goal of Copilot is to be a partner for developers. You could use regular natural language with prompts to input the type of code you wanted to generate. Now, the goal is for GitHub to help streamline the developer's workflow. And it's supposed to do about 50% of the workload for the developer. Now, that sounds awesome. But the question is, how did GitHub Copilot learn to generate that code? Well, Bill Gates is a huge investor in OpenAI. OpenAI was co-founded by Elon Musk, and GPT-3 comes out of OpenAI. This is the technology used to train AI models to generate artwork, music, videos, photos, and to generate code. So basically, all the code that we developers, that we programmers put up on GitHub, all that code has been analyzed by Copilot. But it didn't necessarily learn how to code. It didn't really learn how to create new code. And some people say that it's pretty much like copying and pasting, taking code snippets that exist elsewhere in other projects and giving that code to the developer. But the question is, if the code came from an open source project, open source projects have licenses behind them. Yeah, they're open source and pretty much anybody could use them, but attribution has to be given. It could be the MIT license, a Creative Commons license, it could be a GPL license, but ultimately, attribution of that code has to be given. If I, as a developer, go to the platform, download the code, and if I use that code in my project, I have to give the attribution of where I got that code. But if I use the code that's generated by GitHub Copilot, that's not the case. Often the code that it generates doesn't include an open source license or informs you where that code derived from. Now, how can GitHub get around this? In their legal view, what makes them think they have the capability to do this. Well, they believe they're utilizing it properly based on the fair use doctrine. And they point to the terms of service on their website that pretty much says they're able to use your code for training models like this. But now does their terms of service supersede the requirement to give attribution by the open source project? That's a legal question above my pay grade. Now, when thinking about this topic, it brings me back to the fact where I tell people all the time, one of the best ways to learn how to code is by taking a look at open source projects. Take a look at some of these code repositories, download the official code, study from it, reverse engineer it, dissect it. Take a look at how they're structuring their project. Figure out what programming paradigms are being used, how they're implementing data structures, what design patterns are being utilized. There's a wealth of opportunity to learn from the code that exists. And that's what I advise people to do. But now is GitHub Copilot, is that how they're learning? Maybe that's the goal. Maybe the goal is for them to develop a strong enough AI that can actually learn how to create unique 
code. But that's not currently the case. What's happening now is that GitHub Copilot using GPT-3 is scanning all these different projects and helping developers by giving them code that pretty much already exists. It's a very interesting idea and I think a lot of developers and programmers really enjoy using GitHub Copilot, but the issue of licensing and copyright is real. If you're gonna be using the code generated from Copilot, you need to make sure that you have the legal right to do so. It actually might be a fun tool to use to learn how to code. And I'm pretty sure that they're gonna be refining the product and the service to deal with some of these legal issues. But as it stands right now, a lot of people are watching what's gonna happen in this class action lawsuit. But one of my concerns is that if you use a project like this, especially when you're first learning how to code and you don't learn the fundamentals on your own, that can limit how much you learn and how far you go as a programmer. Yeah, the tool might make your workflow more efficient, but there's something to be said about really knowing the fundamentals. Now, a lot of us programmers like using libraries and frameworks and automation tools, package managers and bundlers. We use these to help streamline the way we work. And this can definitely be part of the tool set of developers moving forward but there's a lot of issues that need to be clarified, especially when it comes to the issue of copyright. All right, so what do you think? Do you think Microsoft, GitHub, and OpenAI are going to ultimately lose this case? Are projects like GitHub Copilot going to go down the drain? Or is the cat already out of the bag and now they just got to find a way to clean it all up? Sound off down below. All right, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon. And as always, thanks for watching and happy coding.